Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The text for our message this morning comes from our gospel lesson. You may want to either have your Bible open to our gospel lesson today or have your sheet with you. And it's that third or the second paragraph in our reading today. Jesus says, When the unclean spirit has gone out of a person, it passes through waterless places seeking rest and finds none and says, I will return to my house from which I came. And when it comes, it finds the house swept and put in order. Then it goes and brings seven other spirits more evil than itself, and they enter and dwell there, and the last state of that person is worse than the first. These are the words of our Lord that we will meditate upon this morning, my brothers and my sisters in Christ. When I read this text this past week, it reminded me of a story that I heard on the news a while ago about one of our service members who came back from a long deployment overseas to find out that a squatter had taken up residence in his hall. This squatter had broken in, changed the locks, and moved all of his stuff in. And then the story went on to talk about the long and bitter battle that the rightful homeowner had to go through to get his own house back. This, to me, is kind of the relatable example of leaving some place unoccupied and unattended, like the person that Jesus talks about in our text today. And I want us today to look at three critically important, soul-preserving things for which Jesus speaks to us in these verses today. Look what Jesus says at the beginning there in verse 24. First, Jesus says, when the unclean spirit has gone out of a person. When? When means that this is a certainty. And it harks back to a few verses earlier in our reading when Jesus says, when a strong man fully armed, guards his own palace, his goods are safe. Now why does Jesus say that? Because Jesus has been accused by his enemies, by his detractors, of being in league with Satan. Satan is the strong man. Satan is the one who is fully armed. Satan is the one who is guarding his own palace. And yes, you and I know from our own experience that Satan is indeed strong. He is indeed fully armed. He is fully armed with all the powers of temptation and hell. And he is indeed guarding his own palace, the hearts and souls of all people. Because the Bible tells us very clearly that we are all born into his kingdom, his kingdom of darkness as blind and dead enemies of God. What the psalmist says of himself applies to each and every one of us since the fall. Behold, I was brought forth in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive. But Jesus doesn't leave it there with the strong man under control. Jesus goes on to say, But when one stronger than he attacks him and overcomes him, he takes away his armor in which he trusted and divides his spoil. Did you catch it? There's that when again. When one stronger. Who is that one stronger? Jesus is the stronger one. He comes not to be in league with Satan, but to attack him, to overcome him and to divide his spoils. What are Satan's spoils? We are. The devil does seem irresistible to us at times. But the truth is that he is no match for the stronger one. Jesus Christ, the Messiah, our Savior, the Son of God. And Jesus, our stronger one, says when the unclean spirit has gone out of the person. This inevitable, irresistible when of Jesus, casting an unclean spirit out of us, happened right there at our baptism. 
The Christian baptismal rite for millennia has included what we call the small or minor exorcism. It is retained in our current Lutheran rite of baptism. You've heard those words spoken to the person to be baptized. Do you renounce the devil? Do you renounce all of his works? Do you renounce all of his ways? We say that because by the loving will of our Heavenly Father who desires not the death of any of the wicked, by the working of the Holy Spirit who uses that mighty sacrament of holy baptism to bring and to work faith, by the word and blood of Jesus, which is combined with the water in baptism, all of our sins are washed away. All of our sins are washed away in the holy blood that was shed for us on the cross. Jesus comes in our baptism and he drives out the devil. He drives out his dark kingdom within our lives. The stronger one. Jesus Christ, our Savior, comes to us in our baptism. He washes away our sins. He cleanses us of all of our sins. He drives Satan out. He makes us a redeemed child of God. He makes us heirs of the kingdom of God. The inevitable, irresistible when of casting out Satan from our souls happen in your baptism, dear Christian. And that is because Jesus Christ, the stronger one, came and he loves you. He loves you through the strength of his sacrifice on the cross for his sin. And he loves you through the strength of his resurrection that destroys the power of sin and death and hell once and for all. All of those powers that were once held over you. The stronger one comes and he pulls you out of the slavery of sin into which you were born. And when Jesus comes and Satan is thrown out, Jesus then comes and takes up his rightful place on the throne of your life. Again, in our baptismal rite, right after that minor exorcism, it is immediately followed by a confession of faith in the Apostles' Creed. In that place, in our soul and in our heart, where Satan has just been ousted, faith in the one True triune God comes and takes its rightful place by the power of God. But the exorcism and confession and baptismal rite is not the end. Jesus warns Christians. He warns us of the necessity of remaining in faith so that the indwelling of Christ and His Spirit can continue. Jesus warns. He warns all of us about the complacency of faith. It's dangerous. He warns us of the danger of leaving ourselves and our lives spiritually unoccupied. You cannot take your baptismal certificate, throw it into the drawer, and then never again darken the door of God's house. Never again read his word or hear his word spoken. Never live a life that is openly and clearly sinful before God by his almighty word. You cannot take any of this for granted and expect that everything's going to be okay. That somehow you've got your spiritual get out of jail, hell, death card in that drawer and you're okay. That is not how it works. The human soul is a house that needs an occupant. If left empty, just like that poor service member I told you about before, an undesirable tenant will come 
and take up residence. In our text, Jesus says that the evil spirit comes back. And trust me, Satan will come back. He's not going to leave you alone. And Jesus says that when that evil spirit comes back, he finds what? That the heart is going to swept clean. Everything's going to put order. But it's empty. So he goes and he takes in seven. Oh, yes, seven. You know that number of completeness? Only now it's a number of complete evil. He brings in seven other spirits worse than himself. And the Bible says, Jesus says, and then the last state of that person is worse than first. Listen. Listen. Only the heart that is filled with the Spirit of Jesus Christ is fortified against the attacks of Satan. The void that is made when Jesus evicts Satan from your life by his mighty power must be filled with Jesus, the stronger one, the Messiah, the Son of God, or Satan will return into your life, into your heart with even more evil, even more vehemence. St. Augustine, one of the church fathers a long time ago once said that every person is born with a God-shaped void in their lives that can only be filled, only be filled with God. So if Jesus is not present in you, or if his presence in you is being denied by the way you live, by the way you speak, or by anything else, by indifference, by a hard-hearted rejection of his indwelling, then I can guarantee you, because Jesus said it, that that old evil spirit, Satan, he will come back. Your own natural, fallen nature will come back. It'll come rushing back in. It'll come back to you with a vengeance and it will be worse for you than when all of that was originally cast out. So I warn you. Listen. God is warning you today. Give Satan no foothold to work his way back into you. How do you do that? Be here. Be here in his house, this mighty fortress that stands against all of Satan's attacks to you. Be in his word and be in it regularly. Receive his admonition against evil that is within your life and repent of it right this second. This is it. No more. Stop. It is done. Cast that Satan out one more time and allow Christ to take the throne of your house. Stop. Just stop. Stop warring against his kingdom. By the way you speak, by the way you live. Self righteousness, self centeredness, they are a open door. An open window for Satan to crawl back in into your heart, into your soul. And when he gets back in, he's going to work against your faith. And he's going to work against the kingdom of God in and around you. So we've heard two of those three points I've talked about. First of all, get out of the way and allow Jesus, the stronger one, to evict Satan from you by his victorious power through the means of word and sacrament. That's point one. Point two, do not leave your heart and soul empty of Christ, of his word, of his sacrament, 
of his church, of his ministration to you. And do not by sin leave any door or any window open in your life for Satan to get back in. Point three. My friends, this is a war. This is a war in which there is no neutrality. All who are outside of the household of God are in the dominion of Satan. Because that is where we all are or were by our sinful nature when we started out. Jesus said it today in the gospel. Whoever is not with me is against me. You can't say I'm in, I'm in either camp. I'm my own person. That's not how it works. Jesus says whoever is not with me is against me. And whoever does not gather with me scatters. God asked Satan in the book of Job, from where have you come? To which Satan responds, from going to and fro on the earth and from walking up and down on it. St. Peter wrote of Satan, be sober-minded, be watchful. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion seeking someone to devour. Listen. In a world where demons roam, there are no empty houses. One is either occupied by sin and Satan, or one by the power, grace, and mercy of God through Jesus Christ has had Satan evicted. And Christ has come and taken up his rightful place on the throne of our lives. Will we fail? Absolutely. Will we leave the window open? We do it all the time. But God doesn't protect us. He calls you back to all of this. He calls you back to him. And he says, let me evict him for you one more time. And let me take up the place where I belong within your life. If we try to leave our hearts empty of Christ, we dare not fool ourselves into thinking that we are really empty because evil will return. It will take up residence and our state will be worse than the first. So my dear friends, Jesus, the stronger one, comes for you. His strength over Satan was shown in the seeming weakness yet power of the cross and the unmistakable power and victory of the empty tomb. This Lent, let us remember again the sacrifice and victory of our stronger one, of our Messiah, of our Jesus, the Son of God, for us. Let us repent. And by the renewing power of the Holy Spirit, sweep our lives and our hearts clean one more time. Put them in spiritual order by the power of the Holy Spirit and let the grace and mercy of God Fill us with Jesus. For Jesus has already disarmed and defeated forever sin and all of our spiritual enemies. And finally, may this house of worship have its occupant always and only be Jesus Christ alone. Blessed are those who hear the word of God and keep it. And to that we can respond. Amen. Amen.